Okay, so the next song we're gonna do, um, I got that other one captured. Everything is zeroed out, ready to, to work on another song here. Um, this one is a track called Back When We Were We by Pete and Rose. Like children playing in the storm. It's more of a kind of slower ballad type of track. Clouds Let's just go ahead and take a listen real quick here. So this one's kind of a slower, ballady pop song, kind of folky sounding, even with the acoustic guitars and piano in there. The vocal seems to be fighting with for the mid-range with a lot of the instruments, not severely, but a little bit, so that's something we're going to have to focus on. Overall, there isn't a lot of changes between verses and choruses here. It's kind of a pretty evened out mix throughout which is a, a good thing um, as far as mastering it's concerned because we're able to really go in. Sometimes there'll be one loud chorus at the end or something. And because we're so dependent on level, we have to kind of concentrate on that area without having it negatively affect the rest of the song. So when I get a song that's constantly changing from loud to quiet to loud to quiet to loud, it can be an interesting song, but it makes it a bit more of a pain to master because those two different dynamic areas affect all of the processing so differently. Anyway, this one doesn't have that problem, or I shouldn't even call that a problem, but it doesn't have that issue where where things are changing a lot. It's kind of a constant sound, which will uh, probably make this uh, fairly quick. Back when love was born. Okay, first thing I'm actually going to do is go to that stereo width thing. Because the mid-range seems to be muddled together a little bit, I want to see if I can widen things out with, with it here. Back when love was born Like children playing in the storm Clouds rolling one by one Back when we were born Slept alone Did something nice there as far as kind of putting some space around the vocal. I'm gonna bypass that for a second though and try this other process out real quick. And what this is, is it's a thing that UAD makes now. What I brought up here is the K Stereo Processor by Bob Katz, who's a mastering engineer from Florida. That's why it's called K Stereo. His last name is Katz, spelled with a K. So what this is, is actually an ambiance extraction program, which it's the only one processor like it. Uh, I don't know any other processor that does what it does. And essentially what it does is extract the tiny delays, 30 milliseconds or less, the Haas delays, H-A-A-S. If you're not familiar with the Haas effect, uh, Google that, and it'll uh, give you some new ways to use echoes and reverb to instead of create a reverb effect, it'll actually not tr give you an effect other than definition of a sound if you're using Haas echoes correctly. So I'm not gonna get into that. What I do wanna get into is what the K stereo processor does is allows you to extract only the Haas delays of a recording and turn them up. Fortunately, you can't turn them down, but it allows you to add more depth and more width or one or the other and then you can also EQ that ambiance. So basically it's extracting the ambiance out of a recording and allowing you to adjust it and EQ it. It's a very program dependent effect on what it's gonna do and how much it's gonna do. This song sounds like it was recorded with real instruments and real microphones in a real room. So I'm guessing it's gonna add a really nice spaciousness to this song. Sometimes this works really well, other times it's just a little too much for me. I'm gonna 
push this effect to its extreme real quick so you can kind of hear what it's adding. Clouds rolling one by one. So with it off. Now if I shut off the wide if, if I shut off the wide effect, you'll hear that effect only kind of provide a depth. If I do the opposite, turn the wide on and the deep off, it should only provide a uh, stereo width effect. Adding them both in there provides a nice ambient sound stage. Now once again, if this song was recorded with synthesizers or keyboards, it's not going to provide much of an effect because there's no natural ambiance in there. This particular recording has ambiance, so I think what it's going to do when set up correctly is, is something really nice. Back when love was born. Okay, so I've added a little bit of that, and then I've also gone in and there's an EQ that allows you to EQ the ambiance, not the entire sound, just the ambiance that you're affecting. And I've put a low cut filter on there at around 80 hertz. That way it's not adding ambiance to the kick and it isn't going Notice when I had that cranked up, it's similar to a very short reverb, but it's always gonna be dependent. What you get when you crank the effect like that is gonna be dependent on the mix and how it was recorded. Okay, so in this case, it sounds a bit like a reverb because we're in a natural room with natural instruments, so. All right, so now I'm gonna set this up the way I wanna actually hear it. Back when love was born Like children playing in the storm Clouds rolling So at first I wasn't really liking what it was doing and then I compared it to the standard stereo width and it really seemed to make things, it, it polished this song off quite nicely, it's subtle. But let me do that again here, they're both bypassed. I'm going to start with the stereo width and then I'll shut that off and turn it to this one so you guys can hear the difference. Back when love was born. So that's the st regular stereo width. So that's nice, but let's check this out. Now if we do the same thing <clears throat> with the case stereo. Back when love was born, like children playing in the storm. I might even have just a bit too much happening there. Clouds rolling one by one. Yeah, so I'm going to use the case stereo on that one. Um, the other thing this case stereo allows you to do, it has an output gain on there. On the input gain, I can turn that on and it gives me an MS, mid, mid and side volume. So without that, with it, I can turn the middle down and we're left with just the sides. Or take down the sides and you're just left with the center. So. One of the things I'm hearing is that the vocal is, isn't really on top of the mix. And this is something I did just last week. I had an album I was mixing, and there was two, or, or I'm sorry, mastering, and there was two or three songs where the vocal seemed kind of buried down in the mix more. And so in the mastering process, I brought, that, brought it out a little to match the other songs so that the vocal wasn't down in the mix but kind of sitting on it. That's what I'm hearing here, too, is that it's just a little, little within the mix. So my natural instinct is to bring it out a little bit so the vocal sits over the top of the mix. However, on that project I did last week, I did that and the client 
ended up asking me to revise that. He said, eh, the vocal seems to be sitting out over the mix a little too much now. So for what I heard compared to what they were artistically trying to do were two different things. Um, I was able to fix that very simply for him. This particular song, it could be the same thing. They may want that vocal kind of tucked down in it a little since it's kind of a slow, mellow tune. But just for uh, courses sake, um, I'm going to see if we can use this uh, MS circuit here, which is at the beginning of the, uh, the K stereo chain before the ambiance. I'm going to dip the sides down just a hair or boost the middle up just a hair and see if we can get the vocal to pop up just a little before the ambiance. Then we're going to add the ambiance in and then uh, hopefully it won't stick out too much. This may or may not work. Back when love was born Yeah, it's sort of doing what I like. Um, I think I'm going to do 0.5 on the middle and then minus 1 on the sides and see if that's too much. Back when love was born Like children playing in the storm Clouds rolling Yeah, that popped the vocal out just a little bit. I may need to do a little EQ on that as well. Um, this mix sounds really nice again. I'm going to go ahead and get rid and delete that original stereo width because I'm liking what the K stereo does on there much better. I'm going to go to that PSP master compressor again. Normally what I would do what I would, would be to go to my TC6000 and do a parallel compression thing here. The master comp does have a knob here to do parallel compression where it's the knob that goes from 100% mix to 100% compressed. I should say 100% uncompressed to 100% compressed. For mastering, I don't like that because as I'm adding in the compression, I'm turning down the uncompressed signal. So you're doing this trade-off like that, where what once again I explained this uh, in the the feedback uh, streaming thing that we just did. When I'm doing parallel compression and mastering, I want the unity gain signal, the the uncompressed signal, at full volume, and I want to just pull in some of that compressed signal. So the, the mix knob doesn't work the same way. Um, I'm going to use it, though. I'm going to set up some heavy, heavy compression on this and then turn the mix all the way to uncompressed and then just add in some of the compressed sound. So let's see if this works. With your photographs and your epitaphs on those goodbye notes, the songs you wrote. Okay, so I've got a pretty heavily compressed signal going on now. With your photographs and your epitaphs on those goodbye notes, the songs you wrote. All right, sorry, the clicking on and off of that is some of the, the presets going, or I'm sorry, some of the parameters going on and off with these heavy settings on it. You can hear it clicking. So, okay, I've got a pretty heavy compression going on there to where there isn't a lot of bounce and snap happening. 
So now what I'm going to do is take my mix control and turn it all the way to zero, all the way to fully uncompressed. Okay, And I'm going to add in just some of that compression. I think that sounds nice. Very, very subtle. I just wanted to bring up the body a little bit so it had that body just hanging there just a little bit. I uh, wasn't trying to go overboard with that. Now I want to do just a little bit of work with the EQ as far as the instruments versus the vocal kind of go. So let's use PSP Neon here.
So there's the mix that we started with. I thought I was pretty much done, although I want to go back to my EQ real quick. The low end vocal, the male vocal in this, certain parts of the song, it's kind of muddying together with other frequencies, and I happen to notice it in the middle here. So I just want to find a place where I can cut just a tiny little window that might help that vocal come through a little better. Uh, this one ended up, um, I was going, trying to work it up to a level of around LUFS of 9, minus 9, but it just didn't sound right when I pushed things that hard. So I ended up at around minus 11, roughly. Once again, I'm, I haven't played it beginning to end to get the full average of the song, but I think it wound up right around minus 11. That's the one thing that I feel I'm really missing when I'm working with just plugins like this, is the ability to use gain staging of a tube output circuit or a clean, you know, FET output circuit 
or an unbalanced output circuit, or I'm sorry, not an unbalanced, but a transformerless balanced output circuit, or one with transformers. Being able to play gain between those things is a way that I achieve loudness without messing things up and without severely altering the sound of a mix. If I was doing this particular song through my normal console, I don't think I would need to... I don't think I would have any trouble pushing it to whatever level I needed to go to. Although at some point, if it had to be pushed super loud, it would start to get ugly. But to where it sounded really good to me, which is what I'm concentrating on these days, was right around minus 11. Um, just to recap, this first plugin I have in here is giving me a bypass. If you notice, it's bypassed itself right here. I have that off. And I'm using this button here to bypass the entire strip of plugins. So that's my before and after kind of thing. Um, this one isn't being used at all, so I'm just going to get rid of it now. So what I did there was I started with this K-Stereo. Coming in, I used the mid-side just gain staging and dipped the sides down by a dB and the middle up by a dB to help push the vocal up out of the mix just a little bit. And then to make up for dipping those sides by an entire dB, I've added a little more of the K-Stereo effect than I probably would have used. And it's just filling things out, giving a nice ambiance and, and soundstage to everything. Making it sound like a, a, just a more polished and finished master. And then I also cut some of the bass out of that ambiance that I'm adding in there. Secondly, I went to a compressor. And I used this compressor in a way that I really haven't before and that is by using the parallel mix on it. And I set it up for some heavy duty compression and then to where I was literally removing all the transients and just had the body of the sound. And then I turned that mix knob all the way to fully uncompressed and then added in enough of the compression to fill it out just a little while still leaving the, the movement and transients of the song there. After a little bit of compression, we did some EQing not any large boosts. I think the largest boost is in this low-end shelf here. Just a couple of, of mid-range and a high-range boost. And then I dipped a couple of frequencies, including a low cut on there, which I want to double-check that real quick as I'm talking. <laughs> It sounds nice to have that on there. Good. And a couple of other little dips here. Uh, one in the low mids in order to clear out that low vocal a little, and another one in the high mids, a very teeny tiny one in the high mids, just to add separation between sounds again is where I think I was going with that one. So after the EQ, we then have, as always, a loudness limiter at the end. Um, if you look at the gain, uh, I think it says 2.75. I'm boosting the gain with that by 2.75. That doesn't mean I'm doing 2.75 dB worth of limiting, though. If we hit play and look at it while it plays, you can see that it's only limiting a tiny amount. It's coming down just when those snare drums hit. So even though it says 2.75, a lot of that is just adding gain. Not all of it is gain reduction. All right, so we've got a nice master there. It's peaking at around uh, minus 11 LUFS. And now I'm seeing one other thing I want to check on here, and that's the linking of this limiter. When I've got a song that's just driving and pounding, I usually leave the limiter pretty well linked, meaning the left side and right side are going to gain reduction the same. In a song like this, it's a little slower and more open, meandering kind of a song like that. Sometimes I'll loosen up the linking on the limiter so that if the snare drum's panned off to one side, it's just kind of dipping that snare drum, not the whole mix. Um, for some reason with the PSP limiter, sometimes on, on songs somewhere between 40 to 60% in, this, in the instance I'm talking about here, 40 to 50% of linking ends up just sounding right for some reason. Um, I don't know how to explain that any better. It just it isn't completely linked up and limiting everything stiffly. It's kind of doing some of that off the, the tippy tops of the transients. So there's 100% linking. Let's get back to where the vocals are. 
Okay, so this is with 100% linking. And if you notice, you can even see it in the meters. They're coming down evenly, and it's actually limiting a little more than it was before because both of them are triggering both sides. Now I'm gonna loosen this link up and you can actually see not only less limiting, but the limiting will be more selective between left and right. This is a subtle effect, and once again, I've got unbelievably great monitors to work with, but where I'm hearing it sound correct is at 60% of linking. Once again, very subtle effect, but let me, what I'm gonna do is type these in. Right now I'm at 60% and it sounds right to me. I'm gonna type in 100 while it's playing and let it go to full linking, and then I'm gonna go back to 60, and then I'm gonna go to 40%, and then I'm gonna go back to 60. Just so you guys, uh, you can probably hear this in headphones as well, but I just want you to hear the difference between the limiting being looser and being tighter and somewhere in between where it sounds right on this, the Goldilocks zone. So that's 60%. Here's 100%. Seems a lot more closed together to me now. I'm go back to 60. Go back to 40%. And back to 60. Once again, it's kind of a subtle effect that I'm hearing here, but all these little details do add up. When I'm at 100% linking, it seems to kind of clamp the song together. Just, just a little bit, not too much. When I go to 60%, I got some of that holding together, but the vocals seem to play by themselves. When I go to 40%, it loosens everything up too much. When I go back to 60%, I can hear the looseness of the music, but the vocals sit there. So, once again, this is a subtle thing, and I maybe have gone on too long about it, but it is something that I'm always paying attention to when I'm limiting, if the song is, isn't just a driving, rocking, or hip-hop song. So, let me show you that real quick between 40 and 60 one more time. So, 60 is where I like it. And listen to the difference between the music and the vocal and how they play with each other or play against each other. When I go to 40, it just seems too loose to me. So anyway, when I go to 60%, I can hear the vocal kind of solidify in the center while the music is still nice and loose. So I'm leaving that at 60, and that's where I want it. So I think I got a nice, a nice setting on that. Let me capture this one, and uh, we'll move on from there. Mm -hmm. 